Tim's American Beauty was made by Robust Tools, America's premier lathe manufacturer. Quality hardened tool rests and live centers too. Robust. Built to turn wood. Enjoyed for a lifetime. Thompson Lathe Tools. Welcome to a new level of professional wood turning tools. Made by a wood turner for wood turners. My turning is eclectic. I, I do one thing for a while, do another thing for a while, and obviously doing these shows I do a lot of little things. But several years ago on our PBS show we did an episode on how to turn pins and it's because I was making a lot of pins for friends at that time and it's a great beginning project. Well I started getting the urge to make some pins for friends again and I realized wow the kits have really changed I mean take a look at just these two that I have in my hand right here these are from Penn State Industries this one's called a Southwest and it has turquoise colored beading in it and so when you put the proper uh, blanks with it it really is cool looking I like one little fact up here if I could set this down this part well on this one it does this part spins. <laughs> I don't know why that's so neat and why it's there, but it works and I like it, it's cool. But then on the darker side, this is another kit I got from him and I love the eyes on that guy right there. Actually, this is my daily carry pin and by the way, it is probably the heaviest pin kit I have ever made. And it's not because of the uh, acrylic infused uh, burl blank there, it's got colors in it, it's because of the metal that's in the kit. It is stout, it'll weigh your pocket way down. But I was getting ready to do this show and at the 24th hour, the last hour, something like that, I went over by Woodcraft, our local Woodcraft, just to get some more ideas because I thought, well, pin kit I can't fill the whole show with. And I ran across this kit and I guess they've been out for a little while. I mean, they're really incredible. This is like a puzzle that you put together on the uh, barrel, the, the uh, tube that you build the, kit, the pin around. And I, this is made by, let's see if I can find it here. It's a gear laser kit. And if you just do a search for gear lasers, you're going to come up with the name Constant Lobshear. Lobshear. Constant Lobster. Constant Lobshear. I hope I got that right, Constant. I apologize if I got it wrong. He's in Atlanta, Georgia, but he's from South Africa. And he has a really cool facility where they do a lot of CNC machining and also laser cutting. And this is what he makes. This is what we're going to be making our kit out of today. This is the gear laser kit. And look at all the little pieces in there. Every single piece in here is laser cut. These little gears are coming out because we're going to replace them with the colored gears. So basically, he, I called him up to ask him a little advice and he said, wow, you want to start it on the deep end, don't you? <laughs> Learn how to swim. This is his most difficult kit that he makes. Of course, we're going to do that. But he makes other kits which are really cool. He makes one with American flags. Uh, they're, uh, the, uh, what you call it, the music note thing. Um, my sister will kill me for not knowing that. But anyway, all sorts of kits with all sorts of designs. It's really, really cool and you can make a super high-end pin. It's just that it's a little bit of a process getting it together. Now the kit we're gonna be making is a Wall Street 2 pin kit chrome. This was straight out of the Woodcraft <laughs> store right there. Made in Taiwan. Uh, I used to know a guy named Taiwan. Uh, anyway, let's pour all this out here. For those of you who haven't turned a pin before, this is what they mean by a kit. They keep the shiny nice parts in another little bag so they don't scratch up. So that's obviously the pin like that. And then you got the inner guts here, which is this is the advancer. This is what spins the refill or the pin to go out and in and out of the thing, out of the, out of the pin. And there's a spring there that also helps in that. But this is what it's all based on. This is the brass tube and this is where you attach your wood. Normally you'd take a blank of wood that's kind of square and long and drill a hole through it and then slide this in there and glue it in. And that'd be the extent of what you have to do. However, with this kit, it takes a lot more work. Now you think, oh, I just slide that in there and I'm good to go. No, this is a puzzle piece. These black gears we have to take out again because like I said, we're going to replace them with colored gears. Now, the surface that I'm working on, it looks pretty crappy, uh, but there's a whole reason behind it. And, oh, make sure when you put your pin kit aside, you make sure you just keep all your parts together. See this bow in here? 
This actually is a piece of wood from the crate that my uh, robust lathe came on and I just didn't throw it away. I haven't gotten around to cleaning it up. You can see it's bowed. Well, this is very important because when you're working with this stuff and you pour it out, you don't want it rolling on the floor because that would be a real pain if you dropped any of this stuff because there's some little things in here. Some got little color pieces that are going to go in the center of the gear, stuff like that. So the first thing you want to do is you want to start separating out these pieces. And I kind of learned the hard way on this that this is not so easy to do because they're laser cut all the way through, but see how tiny that is and it's hard to push. And I see I'm barely getting it proud right there. And you don't want to pull real hard on this part because you could tear a gear off. And when I was talking to Constant, he said, yeah, you are working on the hard one. And I'm looking for a have, had, have, aha, the razor blade. I figured this out. What I thought was is I could take some dikes like this and just come in here and, and clip the wood and break it apart. Well, these are so wide, it shattered the wood and broke the gear in half. So this is the technique I figured out, and see if you can see this, it's gonna be real tiny. Coming out here, try to keep my fingers out of the way. I'm gonna come in here right at that short gear, right, and come short of it, and then press down, and then I'm gonna come back over to the side and press down again. And what I'm doing is I'm literally taking a chunk of wood out on that end. I'm not done yet unless I get really lucky because I found out sometimes you have to take a chunk out on this end too because if you just split it in half since it's curved it doesn't want to slide off yet because this piece of wood's hitting that piece of wood. Now this might get you thinking about another thing. When I start assembling this I'm going to run into those same little problems because I'm going to be putting this gear into a hole that's been cut out of the black base and that's where it gets really fidgety, just like this here. And I'm being gentle with this. I don't want to snap it and I don't want to break it. Uh, if I do break one along the way, I'll show you how you can fix that up because save every piece of wood you have because you can match a piece of wood that is the same color and fill in a gear if a gear goes bad. So anyway, uh, I'm gonna get some stuff out and then we're gonna start putting this on the tube. Once you have all the gears separated out and your headache is starting, <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna look at this and and again you think okay cool I can just slide this on here well the problem is is that it is virtually impossible to one get out these gears pretty much and get in the other gears with this all in one piece so if you notice there are slots along here well constant designed this to where you can actually break this apart now this is where it gets to be really interesting and I'm gonna try to do this carefully do this. Ah, there we go. Just snapped it, right? See? So it comes apart. When you put this together, there are going to be gaps, but don't worry about that because there is a way to fill them up later. But anyway, you can still see I probably can't get that one out. So if I just gently, I'm just gently cracking that like so. That one's loose now. So now I can just start wiggling that gear out. So my next step is one to keep track of what order all these go in and then once I get this apart we're gonna start putting it on the tube and that came off of over there somewhere yeah okay cool it's like putting together one of those 5,000 piece puzzles that you used to get as a kid unfortunately when you're working with the black all the puzzle pieces are the same color <laughs> now there's a very expensive element you need to put in this uh, uh, it is painters tape use the blue or the green because this is stuff that easily peels off when it's on something so you don't want the tape it'll hang on forever then the other thing I'm gonna do I'm just gonna pre this pre set this up move that down there no you get up there I'm just gonna take my scissors and make some small little cuts here because I'm gonna need tiny pieces of tape as I start putting this whole thing together and trust me, you want the tape right at hand when you need it so you can grab it as you need it. So that should last me for a while. Because as we start putting this whole thing together, we're wrapping it and we're gluing, gluing it, taping it as we go. We don't use any super glue until halfway through this whole process. Now I'm getting serious, by the way. I gotta get these on. So our first piece that we're gonna put on is gonna be this nice long one. So it gives me a good base to start with. And if you look here, you can see that I have 
extra on the ends here. So if your tube is uh, a little shorter than this kit, you're not going to lose any of the gears because he made it to where it overlaps a little bit. Uh, so let's get this first little piece of tape here. I'm going to put this on here. It's really hard to keep my hands out of the way and I do apologize because this is so tiny. We don't have any way of shooting this really without getting my hands in the way. So there's going to be our first gear. So let's grab a gear and set it in like so. Now this is where it gets a little fidgety because since everything's curved, you got to get it just right. Now, the artist in you comes out now because I have several different colors, right? So why don't we do blue in here and drop it in. See if I'm doing this the right way. Also, if I got the right size, that would help. Let's go with purple then. There's the big hands again. Ah, let's see. <laughs> There's a curve to it, and when you're not trying to work around a camera lens, it's a lot easier to grab it. There's the curve, so it goes in there, and just fidget with it. You can see the, I don't know if you can see it, there's a grain pattern running kind of like this angle right now. The grain on these runs up and down, so if you could just get the grain lined up, you're good. Brian's probably cramping right now holding this shot. <laughs> if I could just hurry up, there we go, okay, cool. So that's in place. The little thing we want to do right now is then take a piece of tape and just make sure it stays there. So the next thing I have to do is I'm going to start finding the pieces that start going around it and I'm going to start building my way towards the top. Kind of looks like it went through surgery here, huh? <laughs> a bad stitch job. You can see I have all the gears in place and everything's taped up. I still have the tube on the inside, so I'm going to grab a dental pick to help me push that out of there because, oops, no, I'm back, I'm going the wrong direction. I need to leave that in there for a minute because the next step is we're gonna grab our tape here. And so the important thing to do now is we want to enclose this in tape because we're gonna be doing some gluing here. And try to make, well, I'm going to try to make this very even on here, okay? Because the technique that I'm using for trimming up the barrel here in a second is a little bit needs needs <laughs> boy I can really talk I've been concentrating so hard my brain's gone south okay uh, there we go so we're cool right okay we're cool uh, so that's all wrapped now we're going to take the tube and slide it out now one thing about this kit you want to keep in mind is is that my gear is about right there so if I can find a pen that will work, <laughs> I haven't even written with this yet. I hope it, there we go. Hope it works. I'm just going to make a mark there because when I flush this barrel up, I don't want to cut into the gears. You can still, I don't know if you can see, you can still look inside and see where like the top gear is. So I'm going to make a mark right there. So I've got that gear. So now I know once I get to trimming this thing, if I stay short of these marks, I'm not going to cut a gear. So. Here comes the fun part. Uh, you might want a little ventilation for this. I'm not. I'm having a slow day, so I need the help. Ah, do not do that at home, kids. <laughs> okay, this gets fun. I put down the paper towel because we're going to drizzle the thin cyanoacrylic. Thick. Uh, we're going to drizzle the thin. <laughs> Oh crap, now I gotta get that out of there. Okay, don't put thick in there because thick will make the wall thicker in there. Then you can't slide the tube back in. Okay, that looks good. <laughs> also, don't use accelerator when you do this part because the accelerator will bubble up the glue as it dries. Isn't that lovely looking? I need to clean off that tip. Oh, the other thing is don't hold your finger down the bottom like I just did because then it pours right out into your finger. So the deal is, is I want to look in there myself. Okay, I got a couple, I'm sticking my finger, a couple areas where it's not covered yet. You want to coat the entire inside so all the pieces have some amount of glue touching them. There we go. So we're not going to use accelerator. We're going to let this drain and dry for just a minute. And once we do that, we're going to move on to trimming the barrel to the proper size. Tim's American Beauty was made by Robust Tools, America's premier lathe manufacturer. Quality hardened tool rests and live centers too. Robust. Built to turn wood 
enjoyed for a lifetime. Thompson Lay Tools. Welcome to a new level of professional wood turning tools. Made by a wood turner for wood turners.